invested in this place. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you minister to each and every person that's here tonight. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you minister, Father, your peace, Lord. I thank you, Father, that your anointing sweeps over this entire room now, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that the warring angels of the Most High God are standing encamped around about this building. I thank you, Father, that no forces of darkness can hinder. Every one of them are driven back and every one of them are stopped tonight in Jesus' name. There'll be no hindrance in any way in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your holy presence. Father, I thank you, Lord, that this is a special night. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you you begin to move in me, your servant, a new way as you promised tonight. Father, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you in the name of Jesus, Father, for what you're going to do tonight in Jesus' name. Father, I pray your word, Father, in Psalms 119, 18, it says, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Father, I pray, Lord, that you open the eyes of every person here, Father, that, that they may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that your word fall on anointed ears. Father, I pray, Lord, that you just go before me now and prepare their hearts and their minds that they'll be receptive to your word in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you for ministering to every person, Father, by your spirit in the name of Jesus. And we give you all of the praise and all the honor and all of the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I learned something new this week. I learned that the speech center of your brain controls every other nerve ending in your entire body. The speech center of your brain is what causes you to act. Your body corresponds. If you say, I can't do something, the nerves go throughout your body and your body begins to act on what you say. Your body begins to not do whatever it is you say that you can't do. Whatever you say, the speech center of your brain is the controlling factor of everything in your life. I'm, I'm began a study on you'll have what you say. And that truth that I learned this week has just ministered home to me. Indeed, you will have what you say. You need to guard the words of your mouth. Guard every word that comes out of your mouth because it will come to pass, good or bad. The nerve, remember, the speech center in your brain controls the nerve endings of every other nerve in your body. If you say, I'm nervous, here goes the nerve endings in, every, in your fingers and hands. They begin to shake. Whatever you say, your body is, is going to begin to act it out. Praise the Lord. Tracy, I'd like to pray for you. The Lord told me today that He's going to begin to move in a new way in me. And it's going to start tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tracy, have you still been having problems with weakness and problems with strength in your body? Yes, sir. I just told you the key. The speech center in your brain is going to control it. Whatever comes out your mouth is going to control your body. Your body's going to begin to line up with what you say. The Word of God says, let the weak say I'm strong. Say, mm. I'm strong. I'm strong. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. My strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength is made perfect in weakness. But they that wait upon the Lord, but they that wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall run and not be weary. And they, they shall, shall walk, walk and not faint. faint. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you, Father, that you <laughs> begin to guard the speech, Father, that comes out of Miss Dawson. Mouth. Thank Father, you. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you, Father, that you begin to honor her words, thank Father, as your own. Yes. Father, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you in Jesus' name that every word that, that comes out of her mouth, Father, I pray, Lord, that it'll be anointed yes. of you. I commit all doubt and all words of negative talk in, in the name of Jesus, oh, and I say you'll Jesus. leave her and you'll thank not you'll not hinder her anymore in Jesus' name. Right. I say that her body will be strong. Her body is, is becoming strong by the words of her mouth. Father, Amen. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you in Jesus' name, that she will not be weak anymore, but she has the strength of the Almighty God within her. Father, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you just minister your strength and your life in her right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Father. I thank you, Lord, and I I praise you in Jesus' praise name. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the victory. I thank you, Lord, that this is a turning point for Miss Dawson tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus I thank you, Lord, and I praise you that you minister this truth 
deep yes, within her spirit in Jesus' thank you, name. Thank you, I thank Jesus. you, Father, and I praise thank you in the name Jesus. of Jesus yes, for the victory Jesus. for her in Jesus' thank name. You. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. The Lord says, no more negative confessions about I'm nervous. I, okay, right. I'll, I'll not be nervous. I'll move under the anointing of the Most High God. He's given me this voice. It will be used for His honor and for His glory. Be used for His honor and His glory. I'll not move in nervousness. I'll not move in nervousness. I'll not move in fear. I'll not move in fear. But I'll sing as unto the Lord. But I'll sing as unto the Lord. And the angel choir will join in. The angel choir will join in. The Lord says you'll have exactly what you've just confessed. I'll you you just begin you begin to guard the words coming out of your mouth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord says that He's going to continue to do a great and mighty work within you. And He's going to begin to teach you and instruct you in a new way. He's going to begin to open His Word to you in a new light that you haven't seen before. And He's going to, he's going to really begin to open up your heart. And He's going to pour, pour His Spirit with it. Come into you like a flood. It's just going to sweep over you. At times you're going to feel a warmth coming all over your body. It's going to be the presence and the power of the Almighty God. And, and don't be afraid. It's nothing to be afraid of. And the Lord says you begin to speak positive about your marriage. Speak positive about Ray. So he's coming back. I, I have him back. He's in the center of God's will. He's in the kingdom. Begin to, begin to speak those words and you'll have what you say. Praise the Lord. Well, that's not at all what I'm going to be teaching on. I don't know. But <laughs> you'll have what you say. It's going to be a teaching later. But that was just such a truth that the Lord yes. ministered to me, that it has really, it has really begun to change my speech. Your, the speech center in your brain controls every part of your body, every other nerve, everything. Don't forget that. Whatever comes out your mouth, your body's going to act on it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to be ministering tonight on the greatness of God. And I'm so excited about this word. This is such a truth to me. Have you ever just stopped and considered just how big and how great our God really is? I've been a Christian for years, but I've never realized just how magnificent my God really is. On May the 27th, I began a study about the greatness of God, and the Lord began to open up His Word to me. And it's changed my whole thinking, my whole inner image about God. You see, your mind thinks in pictures. And... It portrays images. And I began to realize that I didn't have a very good inner image of God. See, I, I had never been taught. I've only been spirit-filled for one year and nine months. So I had never had any teaching about God, really. And I had remembered as a child, I had read Daniel 7 and 9. It, and it says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did set, whose garment was white as snow, and the hairs of his head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. And I remembered reading that, and I began, that was the inner image that I have, only part of that verse. It said, the Ancient of Days did say it. And I, I thought, well, God has been in existence since everlasting past wow. until now. And it, it, the word called him the Ancient of Days, and I thought, well, he must be an old guy by now, you know. <laughs> It said he, he sat on his throne and his, his garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. And I, I, I just pictured this real old guy sitting up on his throne, hair white and stiff like wool. And I just, that was my inner image of God. That's what I thought of him. And I heard a teaching not too long ago by Kenneth Copeland about God's image inside you. Copeland said that most people have an inner image of, of the Lord as being somebody that just sits on his throne and never moves. And he sits with a big club in his hand ready to pass judgment. If you mess up, he'll hit you with sickness. If you mess up, he'll hit you with poverty. You know, it's something, he'll, he'll bring his judgment. He'll pass his judgment upon you. People live, they have, maybe have a fear of God, a fear of him, and they, they don't have a correct inner image. And the word says that God is love. He loves us. He doesn't bring judgment in that manner. He doesn't bring sickness. He doesn't bring po bring poverty or anything upon us. That comes from Satan. But so many people think that God brings things upon them if they are disobedient or if they fail Him. And you see, we have the wrong inner image. We don't see God in the true light that He is. And he, Copeland said that, that people have such a wrong inner image of God and of angels. He said, 
every picture you see of angels, it says they're these little fat babies with wings. You know, so they're, they're little nude babies and they're just flying around. He said, that's what the Satan in the world would like to portray. God being this little scrawny guy sitting up on his throne and the angels little, as little babies. He says that they don't picture them as these huge creatures in, in full warring dress, full warring attire, with flaming swords standing guard and camping round about us. He says we have such a distorted inner image of God. And I began to realize that that is what I had, a distorted inner image. I never knew really how big and how magnificent my God was. And I began to study, and it has just really, it has just really opened my eyes. I had been battling with a particular fear for about a year and a half. I had talked to Joe about it, and he said that for you to really overcome fear, that the Lord would have to minister something to you that would just turn your heart. And, after, and when it would turn your heart, then the, the hold that fear had on your life would be broken, and fear would lose its power. And so I prayed fervently, and I, I, I asked the Lord to just turn my heart, bring whatever it was into my life, into my spirit, that it, that it would use to turn my heart. And this is what He used. He began to open up His Word about His greatness. It just happened a couple of weeks after I had begun to pray, and I, I began to see for the first time just how great, how majestic, how magnificent, how marvelous King of kings and Lord of lords, how all-powerful my God really is, and how little and how insignificant the devil is, and how much of nothing and how powerless fear is. And the devil and, and fear are really nothing compared to the greatness of God. I'll be reading a lot from the Amplified because it is an excellent translation. It breaks the scripture down in, in much more detail than the King James. And I'll be reading some from the King James translation. But from the Amplified translation in Psalms 147 and verse 4, it says, He determines and counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by their names. Dake had a, has an interesting note or an interesting comment about our solar system and about the stars. He says that our solar system is about six billion miles across. Our galaxy, called the Milky Way, contains roughly 400 billion stars, which are suns. The nearest star is 26 trillion miles away. It is estimated that there are 100 billion galaxies like the Milky Way. This would make 40,000 million, 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 which is 46 trillion stars in space. God knows the exact number of them, for He made them. There are over 500,000 words in the unabridged Webster's Dictionary. If God has every star named, there would be enough such names to fill around 80 quadrillion books that size. No wonder the psalmist says, Great is our God, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. Can you imagine? The Lord's so big and so magnificent. He's so great that He made all the stars, but He not only made them, He's got them all numbered. He counted them and He's given them all a name. Can you imagine 40,000 million, million, million stars? And that's just a rough estimate. And God, He knows the number and He knows the name of every one of them. That is a taste of how big our God is. Turn to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40, beginning in verse 11. Isaiah 40, beginning in verse 11. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arm. He will carry them in his bosom. And he will gently lead those that have their young. So it says that the Lord feeds his flock. He gathers the lambs in his arm. We are the sheep. We are his sheep. And he gathers us up in his arms, and he gently leads us, and he holds us close to him. Look at verse 12. It says, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, marked off the heavens with a nine-inch span, enclosed the dust of the earth in, in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance? Can you imagine God so big that he measured the water of the earth in the hollow of his hand. One hand, it's not hands, not both of them, but one hand. A God so big that he measured the waters of the earth. I looked this up in the encyclopedia, and it said that water covers almost three quarters, three fourths, or 70.8% of the earth's surface. The Atlantic, the Pacific, the oceans, all of the lakes, rivers, and all the water on the earth, God measured them in one hand. One hand. 
said he measured out the heavens in a nine-inch span. He comprehended the dust of the earth. He weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in the balance. Look over at verse 22. It is God who sits above the circle, the horizon of the earth, and its inhabitants are as grasshoppers. It is he who stretches out the heavens like God's curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. So it says that God sits above the circle or the horizon of the earth and the inhabitants are as grasshoppers. We are that small. He is so big that we are as grasshoppers in his sight. It says he stretches out the heavens as a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. Verse 23, I believe in the King James it says, He bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Now the princes, think for a moment, who is the ruler or the prince of this world? He is called the prince of the power of the air and the ruler of the darkness of this world. The Lord spoke this word to me in this scripture. He says that just as the word is sown in the fertile ground of our heart, Satan also tries to sow seed of doubt, unbelief, and fear. Everything he can, he tries to sow them in that, in sow those seeds in the fertile ground. And if we allow this to stay in our lives, we open up. We open ourselves up to the evil spirits of that nature. If it's fear, or if it's doubt, unbelief. But, look at verse 24. It says, Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. And the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. So the Lord told me to claim this scripture for myself, for, for a spirit of fear. He said, claim this word. The Lord showed me to speak it out loud, to claim it as mine, and tell the, the spirit of fear, no, you'll not be planted. That's right. You'll not be sown. You'll not take root in me. So you see, the Lord, He pronounces judgment upon them. He blows on them and they wither, and they're driven away. So you see, the Lord says, you begin to speak that word that they're not going to be planted. Any spirit, any evil spirit that you're having a problem with, whether it's doubt or unbelief, fear, whatever it is, begin to speak the word. Say, no, you'll not be planted. You'll not be sown. You're not going to take root and grow within me. By growing, you see, the more you allow a spirit to manifest its nature, the more it grows and the bigger it becomes to you inside you. So you see, if you begin to rebuke it and say that it's not going to be planted, it's not going to grow, then it cannot get a hold. You see, it'll begin to be uprooted. And then the Lord, He'll set you free of it. Look over at uh, verse 26. In the Amplified, it says, Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these. He who brings out their host by number and calls them all by name through the greatness of His might. And because He is strong in power, not one is missing or lacks anything. Now, the Hebrew word for host here in this scripture means a mass of persons organized for war, an army, soldiers waiting upon war. So you see, the host that it's talking about is God's army of angels. The word says that he brings them out by number. He counts them. He calls them all by name. So you see, the angels have a unique name. Every angel is, has its own name. And it says none of them are missing. The, the word here says that he calls them out by name. I like to think of this as the heavenly roll call. Can't you see the Lord up in heaven just calling out the warring angels, calling by name and by number and them standing at attention? I believe He does this so that the demonic forces begin to tremble when they see the mighty warring angels of the Lord. This heavenly roll call, I believe God does it for Satan's benefit, just so that he can see how little and powerless he is. This, every angel, every mighty warring angel of the Most High God it has a number and has a name. The Lord knows them specifically. I believe they all have a rank and an, and an assignment. And this word, host, means God's army. His army of angels. Look at verse 28. It says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint or grow weary. There is no searching of His understanding. He gives power to the faint and weary, and to him that has no might, He increases strength, causing it to multiply and abound. So you see, He's the Creator of the ends of the earth. It says he, he never becomes weary or grows tired. He gives power to and strength to us when we, when we become faint. Miss Dawson here's you another scripture to claim. He increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it abound. Look back up at, at verse 12. What it's talking about, him measuring the waters 
in the hollow of his hand. We have God's promise in his word concerning his hand in the New Testament over in John 10, 27 and 29. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. This should be assurance enough that we are totally kept and protected in the hand of Jesus. No one can pluck us out. Not only are we kept safe in Jesus' hand, but look at verse 29. It says, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So you see, we have a double protection and a double promise here. Not only are we in Jesus' hand, but we're in the hand of the Father God also. There's no need to fear. If His hand is so big that He can measure the entire waters of the earth in one hand, and if He says that no man shall pluck us out of His hand, surely we do live in divine protection. Sure do. In the palm of His hand. Dake had this comment on this verse. He says, The Father is greater than all the united forces of men, fallen angels, demons, and all enemies. So no one need fear of being snatched out of God's hand. The only thing one must do is come to God and permit His salvation and keeping power to be manifested. Over in Job chapter 28, verse 24 and 25. Job 28, verses 24 and 25. I'll be spending a lot of time reading scriptures in, in Psalms and Job. They're right there. The books are, are back to back of each other. And these two books have a lot to say about the greatness of God. Job 28, 24, and 25. It says, For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth unto the whole heaven to make a weight for the winds, and he weigheth the waters by measure. It says, He looks to the end of the earth. He sees unto the whole heaven to make a weight for the winds, and he weigheth the waters by measure. Must be the anointed. Jesus, Glory. The Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Flip over in Job chapter 38. Job 38. Job 38, verse 22, says, Hast thou entered into the treasuries of the snow, or hast thou seen the treasuries of the hail? And in Psalms 135, verse 7, it says, He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries. Can you imagine a God so big that he holds all of the natural resources of the earth in treasuries? He has them stored up. And when he wants them to come down to earth, it says he just brings them out of his treasuries, out of his storehouses, and they fall onto the earth, the snow, the wind, the rain. This is not the destructive power. This is not floods or anything like that that comes from Satan. But to water the earth with rain, things of this nature, the Lord brings it out of his treasuries. Job 26, verse 7, says, He stretches out the north over the empty place, and he hangeth the earth upon nothing. The Lord created the earth from nothing, and he it's hanging by the mere word of the Lord. He hangeth it upon nothing, so there's nothing holding it up, only the command and the word of the Most High God. Job 37, verses 14 and 16. Job 37, verses 14 and 16. It says, Hearken unto this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Dost thou know the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of Him which is perfect in knowledge? Had you ever thought about just how those clouds stay up there in the air? It says God balances. He keeps them in perfect balance. They stay up there by the balancing of the Lord. And when I was studying this, the Lord reminded me. He, he spoke to me and He said that He's created all of the natural resources, all of the things that, that are beautiful for us. And he, he asked me, he said, how long has it been since you have just stopped and considered, stopped and looked at my handiwork? How long has it been since you have just stopped what you're doing, taken time out to behold the handiwork of the Lord? And I was, I was reading there about the clouds and he said, how long has it been since you've just stopped and looked at the, at the beautiful clouds that are behind the blue sky? And I had to stop and think. And I, the last time I could remember was when I was a child. Laying out in the front porch swing, I watched the clouds. As the wind blew them, they would change shapes and forms, and I remembered how pretty they was. And see, that, that's been about 20 years ago. The Lord convicted my heart about that. He says, you take my creation and the things of my beauty for granted. He says, stop doing it. He says, stop and take time out of your busy schedule. You're not that busy. You can take a few minutes 
to behold my beauty. That's all around you. The balancing of the clouds. He blows upon the winds and, and they make the breeze. And when the trees wave by the wind and the green trees, it says he clothes the grass of the field. We need to take time out to behold the handiwork of the Lord and to just stop and appreciate the greatness of God and he, him loving us so much that he would make this beautiful earth for us. Job 37 and verse 10 says, By the breath of God, frost is given. Imagine that. God just simply breathes and it forms the frost that falls to the earth. By the breath of God, frost is given. Psalms 33 verses 6 through 9 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Now the Hebrew word here for host is the same as it was over in Isaiah 40. This Hebrew word is T-S-A-B-A, -A, and it means a mass of persons organized for war, an army, a company, a host, service, soldiers waiting upon war. So you see, this army of the Lord is his warring angels. They stand ready to fight and do battle for me and for you. And it says that the host of them were made by the breath of his mouth. See, the Lord, he breathed when he created Adam in the garden. He breathed into his nostrils and he received the breath of life. And by the breath of God, the angels of the Lord were made. We live and move and have our being by the breath of God within us. So it's by his breath are all living things made. Talking about angels here, it says, we know that we have at least one guardian angel. Each one of us have at least one. We, I believe we have more than that. Okay. Psalms 34 and 7 says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So not only do we have our own angel of the Lord, but we have the entire army of the Lord, that heavenly host that's waiting there for the word to be given. And they will come and, and war in our behalf. So you see, the Lord makes provisions for our protection. We have our own angel that encamps round about us to deliver us. We have the heavenly host of the warring angels. Isn't that great that God loved us that much? He has his mighty army of warring angels just waiting to come to our rescue when Satan attacks. Praise God. They were all created by the breath of his mouth. Verses 7 through 9, it says, He gathereth the waters of the sea together, as in he. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Everything God created is held fast by the command of his word. He spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Turn over to Psalms Chapter 18, Psalms 18, beginning in verse 6, says, In my distress, when seemingly closed in, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, his heavenly dwelling place, and my cry came before him to his very ears. It says, In my distress, when seemingly closed in. How many times we felt like this? You feel like your problems are so great that they have just closed in around you. And you see, when we begin to cry out, we're just like David. Our cry comes before the Lord. It comes to His very ears. Look at verse 7. Then the earth quaked and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled. They moved and were shaken because he was indignant and angry. There went up smoke from his nostrils, and lightning out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. You see, the Lord becomes angry when Satan brings all the problems and brings his attack on us. The Lord becomes angry. Verse 9 says, He bowed the heavens also and came down, and thick darkness was under his feet. So not only does our angel encamp round about us, not only does the heavenly host of warring angels come to our aid and our rescue, but if that is not enough, it says that the Lord God Almighty himself came down. Right. He came down for David and he's no respecter of persons. Right. We're just as important to the Lord as David was. Right. says that the Lord came down. Yeah. Praise God. Look at verse 10. He rode upon a cherub and flew swiftly. Yes, he sped on with the wings of the wind. So you see the Lord came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He put 
He put all of the darkness of the enemy, all of the evil spirits, all the rulers of the darkness of this world. He put every one of them under His feet. That's where we shall put them. That's where they belong for us is under our feet. We're, we are to tread on them. And you see the Lord Himself came down. He rode upon the cherub and flew swiftly. Yes, He sped on with the wings of the wind. Can't you just see the Lord just zipping through heaven back and forth, coming down to our rescue? Praise God. He comes down in our behalf. That's right. Praise God. This excited me so much. He rode upon the cherub and flew swiftly. He sped on with the wings of the wind. Praise God. You see, he's not confined to his throne. He's not confined. He doesn't sit up there all the time. Praise God. He comes to our rescue. He comes to deliver us. You see, the Lord come down and to wage war and to deliver David. And he'll do that for us also. Look at verse 10. The cherub, I looked it up in about all of the translations that I had, and I have several translations, and almost all of them gave a different translation of cherub. But the cherub in the Old Testament named for the angels that stood around the mercy seat and guarded it. So some, some translations says an angel. Some of them says a storm. All right, there's different translations, but you see the, it doesn't matter. The Lord still he comes down and he moves. Sure does. The Lord rides upon that cherub and he comes down riding upon the wings of the wind. Verse 11, he made darkness his secret hiding place and his pavilion, his canopy. Round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of skies. You see, when we're going through our darkest times, our greatest times of difficulty, this is when the Lord is closest to us. Mm-hmm. Even though during these times it seems that he's the farthest away, says he makes darkness his secret hiding place. Sometimes I think that he's hiding from me, you know, instead of him being there with me in that darkness. Because you see, when when we're crying out for help, I know so many times I've cried out to the Lord, and then I'll, I get a period of silence. It doesn't seem that he's moving. It seems like I'm just stuck there in the darkness. It seems like I'm just stuck in those problems that, that Satan has created. And see, Satan will, be, will begin to whisper, and he said, well, why don't you just give up? What's the use of going on and trying and standing and standing? God's not going to answer your prayer. See, you've been crying out and he hasn't moved yet. So why don't you give up? What's the use? But you see, look at verse 12. It says, out of the brightness before him, there broke forth through his thick clouds, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered from the heavens, and the Most High uttered His voice, hailstones and coals of fire. So you see, just when all seems lost, the brightness of the Lord breaks forth through that darkness that we're in. Those dark problems and those circumstances, the Lord breaks forth through that darkness with those dark clouds, with hailstones and coals of fire. He thunders in the heavens, and the Most High, He utters His voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Verse 14, he set, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he flashed forth lightnings and put them to rout. Can't you see the, the most high God as he sends out his arrows and Satan and all of those forces of darkness that have been causing the problems in our lives? Can't you just see them begin to scatter? It says that he scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and he put them to rout. He gets them on the move. They have to flee. When the Lord God Almighty Himself comes down to our rescue, forces of darkness don't have any choice. They have to go. Praise God. Verse 15. It says, Then the beds of the sea appeared, and the foundations of the world were laid bare at your rebuke. O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached from on high. He took me and drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me and abhorred me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted and came upon me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay and my support. So you see, flesh and blood are not our enemies. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rivers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6, 12 tells us this. This word assures us that our enemies are not people. You see, we're fighting against demonic forces, against the strongholds of Satan. But the Lord is our stay and our support. Verse 19, David is speaking, says, He brought me forth also into a large place. He was delivering me because he was pleased with me and delighted in me. And he delivers us also because He's pleased with us and He's delighted in us. When we're trusting Him and when we're depending on Him, He's pleased and He's delighted. 
and He delivers us. You see, after a period of darkness, a time of problems and troubles, the Lord brings us into a large place, a place of victory and a place of rest. Right. Praise the Lord. Isn't this great? Yes. The Lord loves us so much that He personally leaves His throne and comes down and delivers us from the snare of the fowler. He delivers us from the problems that Satan has created in our lives. Just to give you another reference about God coming down, turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy 33, verses 26 and 27. Deuteronomy 33, 26 and 27. In the Amplified it says, There is no one like God, O Israel, who rides through the heavens to your help, and in His majestic glory through the sky. So you see it says here again that the Lord rides through the heaven in His majestic glory to come to your aid and to your rescue. Right. He rides through the heavens to your help in His majestic glory through the sky. Verse 27, The eternal God is your refuge and dwelling place. And underneath are the everlasting arms. He drove the enemy from before you and thrust them out, saying, Destroy. You see, the Lord indeed is our refuge and our dwelling place. We are under His everlasting arms. So there is no need to fear when the Lord Himself will leave His throne and come down and come to our rescue. He drives back Satan and He drives back all of those demonic forces away from us. And He brings us into that place of victory. Psalms 104, verses 1 through 4. Psalms 104, verses 1 through 4. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O my Lord, my God, Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who coverest thyself with light as with a garment, who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. I want you to notice that word ministers. The word minister in the Hebrew there is shareth. It means to attend to as a menial or a worshiper, to contribute to, to minister unto, to do service, to be a servant or to wait on. You see, as we worship and minister and serve and wait on the Lord, we are then His ministers. And He says that He makes His ministers a flaming fire. I've been claiming this word for myself this whole week. And it is beginning to make a difference. I'm beginning to claim this word. I'm going to claim it every day. And you each can claim it too. Because you're each a worshiper of Him. You each serve Him. You're a servant. You wait upon the Lord. So you're one of His ministers. Claim this word. He makes you. He makes His ministers a flaming fire. Cloven tongues of fire coming out of our mouth. Don't you know we'll be a witness to the world with the fire and the power of the Almighty God in yes. display in our lives? Yes. What a witness to the world will be. I, I'm going to claim this word every day. Every day. Yes. Job chapter 9 and verse 8. Job 9 and verse 8 says, Which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waters and on the waves of the sea? See, up until I read these scriptures, you remember I told you that I had a very immature image of who God really was. I always thought that He just sat up there in heaven on His throne and never moved. I thought he just sat up there and just watched, looked down upon the world beneath, but I didn't think that the Lord ever moved out of his throne. But the Scripture says that he walks on the waves of the sea. He walks on the wings of the wind. You remember we, we read a few minutes ago. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, in Genesis 3, 8, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. So not only does He walk around, but the Word says that He makes the clouds His chariot. He rides upon the cherub, and He flies upon the wings of the wind. So you see, He's not at all bound to His throne. We bind Him and we try to limit Him with our carnal thinking. But the Lord, you know, if He'll leave His throne and come down and come to our rescue and deliver us, He cares so much for us to come down personally and deliver us and set us free. So you see, He's in no way bound or limited to that throne. Psalms 139. His presence is all around us. In Exodus 14 and 19, it says, The angel of the Lord, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went before their face and stood behind them. Isaiah 58 and 8 says, The glory of the Lord 
shall be your rear guard. So the Lord is behind us as our rear guard. Exodus 33, verses 14 and 15. says, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39. says, Know therefore this day, and consider in thine heart, that the Lord, He is God in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath, there is no one else. So you see, the Lord is above you to watch over you. Deuteronomy 33, verse 27. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee. So you see, the presence of the Lord is underneath you to support you. Psalms chapter 5 and verse 12 says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, wilt thou compass him with as with a shield. Psalm 16 and 8, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. So you see, the presence of the Lord is at your right hand for fellowship. Psalms 125, verse 2, says, As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the word is round about his people from henceforth even forever. So you see the presence of the Lord is round about you as a shield. Isaiah 52, 12 says, For ye shall not go out with haste, nor by flight, for the Lord will go before you. So the presence of the Lord goes before you to lead you. Ezekiel 36, verse 27, And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. So you see the presence of the Lord is within you as a comforter. Matthew 28, verse 20, says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So you see God's presence is behind you as a rear guard. It's above you to watch over you. It's beneath you to support you. His presence is at your right hand for fellowship. His presence is round about you as a shield. His presence goes before you to lead you, and His presence is within you as a comforter. That about covers it, doesn't it? <laughs> He's totally around us, above us, beneath us, and in us. Praise God. Isaiah 66 and verse 1. Isaiah 66 and verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. So you see, I begin to see just how great and how big God really is. I begin to see just how small and how little and how insignificant fear was. You see, with God's presence totally around us, and a God so big that He can sit in His throne in heaven and makes the earth His footstool, that is a big God. And there's no reason, none whatsoever, for us to ever fear or walk in any type of fear or be afraid. Matthew 10 and verse 30 says, But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So you see, God loves us and He cares for us so much that He counts the very hair. And He knows when one falls out and when one grows back. Doesn't the Lord really love us to care for every little minute detail of our lives? Think about this. This is something that I hadn't realized till last week either. That the Lord loves us so much that He gives each of us our own unique language of tongues. I never had stopped to think about it. Every person has a unique language of their own. Nobody else can understand it. Their own prayer language that they can pray to and worship the Lord with. When you speak with other tongues, you're using your own personal prayer language that the Lord loved you so much to give to you. No one else, no one else knows what, what you're saying. Just think of a God that great to be able to understand and speak all of the thousands and the hundreds, you know, of foreign languages. German, Russian, Spanish, all of the foreign languages. Much less all of the millions of people that are spirit-filled and speak with other tongues. That's a big God, how mighty and magnificent He is to understand every prayer language of every person. And you, you need to praise God and thank Him that He loves you so much to give you your own personal language that you can praise Him with and intercede with to him. Psalms 90 and verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. So you see, God is from the everlasting or the eternal past. He has always existed. He's been in existence forever, and He will exist forever in the future. God is from everlasting 
to everlasting. He is God. Truly, we do serve a great God. And besides Him, there is none other. I challenge you to study these scriptures. Begin to let the inner image that you have of of God be changed and transformed by His Word. And you'll begin to see just how great and how magnificent our God really is. There are scriptures, I only scratch the surface. I've got a book that has got 30 pages of nothing but scriptures on God. And I only covered 15 or 20. God is so great, and the Word is just full of His His magnificence and His greatness and His creation, how everything is created. He loves us so much, and He cares about us. He cares about you. He cares about your problems. And His angel encamps round about you and delivers you. His heavenly host of warring angels comes to do battle in your behalf. And God Himself leaves His throne, comes down, gathers the forces of darkness. He puts them under His feet and He delivers you. He brings you into that large place, that place of rest and that place of victory in Him. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God's a great God, isn't He? Praise the Lord.